I'm Samuel from Endes uh, Marketing Division. And uh, in these next 25 minutes, I'd like to uh, take your time to walk through uh, the latest uh, Endes RISVI products for automotive and uh, AIoT. So I think uh, this morning and just from the panel discussion, we are seeing that RISVI is rolling, uh, breaking into many new frontiers. And my colleague Charlie talked about extensively the breakthrough we are making in the uh, data center accelerator space. And in, 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 my, in my part, I'm going to talk about um, RISVI, uh, you know, breaking into automotive and uh, IoT and AI ML at the edge. So according to various market researchers, uh, we are going to see, you know, 10% close to 30% and close to a whopping 80% uh, growth, growth rate in these uh, respective segments. I think we are seeing uh, this is fueled by, you know, technology innovation happening across all three segments. Electrification of vehicle, um, autonomous driving, self-defined, uh, software-defined vehicles, driving automotive innovation, ubiquitous connectivity for IoT, requiring ever more power efficiency, and uh, hardware-based security. Um, large language model is taking the uh, industry by storm and it's becoming a bedrock for all the future innovation. So at Endus, as a foundational IP provider, we are accelerating our product development into these uh, three areas and it's what I'm going to uh, uh, share with you the rest of my talk. So let's first talk about uh, automotive. I think we can all relate that uh, standards play a, a key part in shaping the automotive industry. And uh, the standards are really exist to ensure that the, the vehicles and the person behind the wheel uh, is safe. So just to give you some examples, right? Uh, quality, we have the ISO 9001 that stipulates that company need to have a quality management system in place to develop high quality system that go into an, uh, a vehicle. Reliability, we have the AEC Q100 uh, standard that try to govern the IC reliability and uh, I, I see going, through, uh, going for uh, pressure testing to be accredited. And then for safety, trying to answer how safe right, the vehicle is, we have the ISO 26262 standard that try to ensure that uh, the component, the system going to the vehicle is safe enough. And that's really the focus uh, subject of the, today's presentation, right? It's a most uh, advanced uh, internationally recognized standard uh, trying to uh, encompass the entire safety life cycle of the, the system and establish a common language in the supply chain so that there's a common understanding and uh, avoiding vagueness or ambiguity between the suppliers and the customer relative to the functional safety subject and also put the necessary resp responsibilities on the supplier to demonstrate they have, uh, you know, contribute to the safety of the vehicle, uh, of the product they are developing. So, from at, in a nutshell, I think ISO 26262 try to remove or reduce the uh, occurrence of uh, faults in, an, uh, in a vehicle, right? And generally speaking, there are two types of faults, systematic fault and uh, random faults. The standard try to address um, with systematic faults are faults that occur in a deterministic way uh, to a certain cause uh, rising from design errors or software errors. And uh, a company to show development process is rigorous and robust enough to remove or reduce uh, systematic faults. For random faults, those are that occur unpredictably during the operation of the system. Uh, Runtime errors, which can be transient or permanent, and uh, it can occur due to uh, random defect, aging of the product, wear out, or um, certain effects like EMI or electro migration effect. Um, and to uh, uh, remove such kind of fault, you need to put in the necessary uh, safety design into your product uh, to remove these type of faults. And at Endus, we have achieved both certification for the development process, as well as uh, achieving uh, certification at the product level. In fact, we have um, made it a decision to uh, 
increase our investment uh, for automotive IP development. Uh, since joining um, Greasefy as a premier founding member, you know, we have certified our development process to the highest uh, uh, ISO level, uh, to the SLD level, implying that we can develop both hardware and software product to uh, uh, functionally save hardware and software product. And also we have uh, chosen uh, one of the most widely licensed cores the, uh, from our 25 series to adapt it to be a, f a safety enhanced product targeting automotive. Um, and we have achieved the uh, N25 FSE certification to the SLB level uh, last year. And we have licensed it uh, over a dozen times. And uh, we are expanding our overall safety enhanced uh, product offering, um, which I will talk about in the next uh, slide. So on, on this page, you can see the uh, complete uh, functional safety course catalog or lineup uh, we are uh, developing and planning right now. Um, you can see that for mainstream processing, um, targeting automotive ECUs and uh, MCUs, we have the, uh, the 25 SE series products, uh, N25 FSE, which is already certified to SLB and licensed over a dozen times. It's close um, cousin, D25 FSE, that support DSP uh, instruction. It's already released uh, this month and uh, will soon achieve SLB certification next quarter. For more mission critical sockets, uh, we have a D45 SE, giving you higher computing power and also higher level SL uh, compliance, uh, achieving uh, planning to achieve SLD compliance. And uh, IP will be ready in Q4, and uh, we are planning to have it certified before Q3 next year. And on the lower end of the uh, performance, we have uh, a new compact core uh, under development is the D23, uh, with emphasis on low power and uh, security. And uh, we will have a safety enhanced version of it available uh, second half of the next year and certified as well. Finally, at the uh, high performance uh, space, we are collecting market inputs to decide uh, what is the, uh, the, our uh, 60 series core that we will make a safety enhanced version of. Uh, so that's under planning right now. So with that uh, broad offering and rich portfolio, we can really uh, enable our customer to target a wide range of automotive designs, ranging from the the NO ECUs, MCUs, to the more mission critical uh, systems such as the elect elect electric power steering, electronic stability control, and uh, battery management systems that typically require higher SL level. Uh, and we really see two uh, adoption scenario by our customer. Uh, one, one class of customer uh, which we, we see a lot recently is they are looking to develop a new uh, automotive uh, SOC using RISC-V processor because of the RISC-V momentum. And the other camp is for um, customer who already have non-automotive product who want to expand their market into automotive. Uh, adopting uh, our safety enhanced core uh, presents a quick pass for them to uh, have a solution turnaround which can uh, target the automotive space. So um, this is a summary of the highlighted features and the uh, architecture of the 25 series course, the N25 FSE and the D25 FSE. Both are five stage in order uh, uh, processor, single issue um, instruction dispatch, supporting the RISC-V uh, RV32 GCB P ISI extension, and also supporting the NDSTAR V5 um, technology giving you additional performance, memory bandwidth, and uh, uh, code size reduction uh, benefits. Uh, flexible memory system with configurable range on I ID cache and local memory, and uh, bus interface, AXI or HB interface support with uh, a direct um, access port to the local memory for DMA or other uh, bus masters. And we have building uh, many uh, functional safety features into the core, 
such as the core trap status bus interface that signal to the top of the SOC if there is an uh, exception occurring and what's the cause of the exception. Uh, ECC protection across all SRAM instances and also hardware protection for stack overflow and underflow as well as PMP for uh, protecting uh, the uh, accessibility of different address ranges. This is a certificate we achieved for the N25 FSC. It's approved, uh, accredited by independent assessment body, uh, SGS TUFSAR, which itself is accredited by German accreditation body DAX. So both very reputable certification bodies and uh, we have uh, satisfied all the relevant uh, parts of the ISO uh, 26262 requirement. Uh, with part four, we achieve partial uh, fulfillment because it's about system level integration and validation and uh, an IP is only a part of an overall system. So these, uh, along with the world product we are providing to our licensee, really make the efforts of uh, developing their automotive SOC and certifying their SOC uh, to be less effort required. And um, as I mentioned in the catalog, we are in the process of developing a higher performance and higher SO level core, uh, D45 SE. Uh, it's an A stage uh, processor, dual issue, and uh, supporting the RV32 GCBP extension, as well as the ND Star uh, V5 extension. Similar flexible memory subsystem, and also wider uh, bus interface up to one tw uh, 128 bits, and also many uh, peripheral port support with uh, a cache uh, uh, flash memory interface to connect to flash memories and share and private peripheral interface. And we have also added more uh, safety features um, to support the SLD level. Uh, we are supporting uh, a kind of uh, industry norm, the dual core lockstep implementation whereby both cores are running the, the same code and through the comparator to see if there's any difference uh, between the outputs and if there's a difference indicating there's an exception as an error occurs. But if your system does not require SLD level, the system, the core can be configured to run in, in a so-called uh, split mode where each core can run independent code uh, but then uh, you are running at the uh, lower SL level, SLB. And uh, we are also uh, enhancing the ECC support to support address decoding protection and also white noise protection. And also adding bus protection, meaning that all the data traversed through the uh, bus interfaces are also ECC protected. And uh, we plan to achieve uh, certification by before uh, Q3 next year, IP available end of the year. And um, D23 is uh, the new uh, compact processor that we are uh, developing, targeting IoT, MCU, and uh, ECU design. It's a three-stage uh, single-issue uh, processor with some uh, dual-issue capability, supporting the latest uh, RISC V SI extension, uh, including uh, ZCE, which gives you additional code size reduction benefits. Uh, scalar crypto extension support, uh, K extension, and uh, cache management operation supporting uh, three privilege modes and uh, many configurable options to tailor to your uh, design need, uh, including uh, NDIS custom extension support, uh, power management, uh, wait for event, wait for interrupt, power break, as well as optional core, uh, core level interrupt controller for vector and priority interrupt support. And also, again, flexible uh, memory subsystem design, uh, IND cache and local memory support, and also optionally uh, read-only cache support. Um, and uh, we also plan to uh, develop a safety enhanced version of D23. Uh, we'll target also SLD uh, compliance with SLB supported uh, that will be available uh, Q2 uh, next year. And um, as you know, for IoT uh, products, um, memory is very precious. Therefore, uh, benefits of code size reduction is important. And as you can see in a table with D23, with the ZC extension support and the ND Star V5, uh, code size reduction technology, 
across these various benchmark, uh, you can gain over 20% uh, more cold size reduction compared to the baseline uh, MAC uh, ISA. And uh, increasingly, uh, companies are looking for hardware-based security uh, in, in, the, in the hardware, in the SOC, and we have many uh, security feature building into D23 and D23SE, such as the supervisor mode PMP, which enable you to create, um, carve out different uh, zones of execution environment. You can have a rich, rich execution environment alongside a trusty execution environment. You can even have an execution environment dedicated to full stack code. Uh, each is isolated from each other, uh, giving you that uh, protection. And uh, the secure monitor, uh, monitor code running in the machine mode will uh, enable you with these uh, different zones of operation. And uh, IOPMP will give you that uh, IO um, protection, uh, which uh, the specification is uh, being created at RVI uh, right now. So uh, security is a very important uh, you know, uh, requirement and this uh, system gives you a uh, concept of a security system based on D23. And we are working uh, actively to expand our uh, automotive ecosystem uh, partnership and, and ecosystem. Uh, in fact, uh, after our launch of our safety enhanced core, many of these uh, third party company, they approach us directly uh, seeking for collaboration opportunities. Uh, for example, both um, IAR and Green Hills, their uh, safety certified uh, compiler and debugger support uh, and this core. And uh, Loaderback has been uh, our long term partner uh, since the uh, end inception. And uh, recently, um, the Autosar uh, are getting a lot of inquiry from our uh, customers. So Vector, one of the leading Autosar vendor, they are porting the Autosar OS to uh, end this uh, hardware platform. And also safety Autos vendor like uh, Wittenstein, they are also porting their safe Autos uh, to uh, end this uh, base hardware. So next, I'd like to uh, switch gear to talk about a, a new IP we have just recently uh, announced last month. This is the uh, Andes Air uh, ANDLA i350. Uh, i350 is the first generation of the deep learning accelerator IP uh, for uh, RISC-V processor that we are um, announcing and uh, we are making available to our customers, and also making available a complete uh, software SDK along with uh, software runtime to support developers developing uh, neural network model for the edge uh, running on Andes Core and the i350. So we really see Andes in a unique position of you know offering RISC V processor and uh, deep learning accelerator and also provide that extensibility for our customer to architect and uh, differentiate their product. It's a scalable IP that uh, you can instantiate multiple instances of the DLA, and uh, it can work with any of the Andes core in a seamless manner. It's very easy to set up and uh, to run the, the neural network model, and uh, once it complete, it will signal to the core to process the next uh, batch of data. It's ideally suited for uh, image, video, speech, voice, and audio uh, neural network applications. Because it's scalable, uh, you can configure the max, uh, in, a, in a max from 32 to 4K, and under one gigahertz that translate into uh, 64 um, giga ops to eight tops uh, performance range. Uh, you can also configure the amount of memory depending on the neural network type and the parameters in the model offering leading industry uh, power efficiency with over five tops per, per watt, has uh, integrated DMA and local memory uh, for parallel data processing and data movement uh, uh, efficiency. Uh, it's targeting edge inference workload, so you can imagine a smart camera doing motion detection, theft detection, Smart sensor in a smart factory for automatic, automatic optical inspection, uh, predictive maintenance. Uh, for smart home devices, intelligent HMI 
uh, interface, uh, AIoT and robotics, uh, camera-based uh, robot that can be better at path planning and path finding, and also potentially save you expensive hardware sensors. Wearable could be another target use case. Uh, it has harder and designed to support many of the modern day neural network models and operators listed here. Uh, image and video uh, supporting AlexNet, VGG, and nowadays uh, more commonly seen uh, MobileNet and ResNet, uh, object detection, YOLO, SSD MobileNet, etc. Uh, speech and voice and audio, LSTN, um, RN and GRU. And uh, many operators supported convolution 2D, depth-wise convolution, element-wise, fully connected, pooling. Uh, I want to highlight the operator fusion support. Um, if you have any uh, of the com combination of the two operators operating in sequence, the data can be directly forwarded to the next operator uh, without having to store back and load it back from memory, uh, giving you that extra performance efficiency benefit. And efficiency is really the word here, right? So um, if we do a ResNet benchmark on uh, end this uh, vector processor, NX27V, uh, I350 gives you uh, 15x more throughput at uh, roughly about a quarter of the area. So that uh, results in 57x more performance efficiency, performance per millimeter square. So you are trading off um, efficiency versus uh, the general purpose uh, of a processor. But the processor always, uh, if the operator is not supported, uh, you always fall back to run on the processor and also give you that uh, future uh, you know, extensibility required on a general purpose processor. And uh, besides the IP, we are providing uh, a software uh, uh, SDK. Uh, for developers, um, it uh, has several key components, right? The uh, NM pilot, that's an offline optimization tool that does the pruning, the quantization, and various optimization of the model. The inference engine supporting TensorFlow, TensorFlow Live for microcontroller and TVM, as well as the actual NDLA driver, and uh, libraries that with uh, many functions uh, supported as part of the NDC IDE. So uh, the input to the SDK is the uh, NM model in either PyTorch, TensorFlow Lite, or ONNX formats. The output is uh, executable image uh, running on the i350 along with uh, C code, which you can integrate into your uh, Applecast uh, application. Um, and we are, at Endus, we are committed to the compute library evolution because we know that uh, it's a fast moving space with new operators and new APIs emerging every year. Uh, so you can see that today, Endis Air, the NN library, we have over 170 function API supported, but I'm sure next year there will be a newer APIs and operator we need to support. Um, so um, as evidenced by the increase we have over each generation of the Endis ID tool, uh, for example, from 5.10 to 5.20, we have added another 130 uh, functions. Uh, we are anticipating with the new release of ND side uh, v3.530, there will be another 180 new functions supported. So uh, thereby uh, future-proofing uh, your uh, machine learning uh, model uh, by providing uh, the rich uh, library support. So, um, in summary, I think we are seeing today that uh, you know RISC-V is entering you know new spaces and it's uh, growing rapidly in different spaces in automotive, IoT, and machine learning, and machine learning and AI. And uh, we hope that uh, Endis can be your partner, right, to uh, break into these new frontiers. So with our safety enhanced core, uh, it will enable you to certify better certify your system or your SOC to meet the ISO 26262 requirements. With the new uh, D23 processor, you can enable you to design an IoT SoC that's uh, low power and very compact and very uh, you know low memory footprint required. And uh, with the DLA i350, it can enable you to design an edge uh, RISC-V system uh, to be uh, be very efficient at machine learning uh, workload processing, but also enable you to this uh, extend 
uh, this architecture to support your own um, instruction set and your own uh, operator type. So uh, with that, um, I hope you have learned something useful from the, the talk, and uh, I thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Samuel.